Welcome back to the Kajus County Government Hour. I'm John Pless with Morris Brandy, uh, Bandy, excuse me, and also with Bill Clark. Um, fascinating conversation that we could go on hours with, with this, but we'd also like to encourage people to visit and to learn more. So tell us a little bit about what we're seeing in this old church now, because I see books, I see artifacts. Well, uh, of course, we have the original sanctuary. This mm -hmm. church is not been, it's like it was when it was built. Like the benches were the on. The benches and the, like the, pulpit. the pulpit. And uh, and we have a museum that we have, uh, that has been built inside the, the church. Uh, and it contains artifacts of Catoosa County and it's things that have been accumulated over many, many years. The different members have either contributed things themselves or uh, uh, found people who contributed uh, artifacts for a museum. So the museum has been here for a number of years and uh, that's one of the things that we do maintain it. We keep uh, the church <clears throat> open. Well, we, we were keeping it open two days a week or three days a week. Now we've got it open two days a week and mm -hmm. Bill, uh, Bill is one of our docents that's here on uh, Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, and we encourage people to come and uh, tour the museum. Uh, that's one of the things we plan on doing is to open the museum up to, if we can arrange for appointments, we hope to be able to encourage. We'd like to see busloads of people come. Sure. So uh, the, that's in the future that we're, one of the things we're working on. But because of the issues we've had with the um, uh, Georgia Department of Transportation and the, the reconstruction of the uh, US 41 out here, uh, they impacted our site and as a result they've agreed to uh, give to mitigate that by helping upgrade our museum. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're in the process of doing that. The, uh, the state of Georgia has hired uh, West Georgia College uh, and the history department to come and, uh, and look at our museum and to develop a plan to upgrade it. That plan has been completed. It's been given to us. We've reviewed it, commented on it. And so it's in the process of moving forward toward implementation. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're excited about that. Now yeah. when you say renovate, uh, are you speaking of uh, well, bookshelves or, or artifact new, uh, there, curio cabinets? Right, there will be new cabinets. All these cabinets will be replaced by new cabinets okay. that would be more like you would see if you went to the Atlanta History Center. Okay. And there will be banners that were printed banners. It's, it will be a much, much improved museum over what we have now. Mm -hmm. So the state has a budget, I think it's about 80 or over $80,000 that they're planning on spending on just the museum. Excellent. Now, do you get donations as well, uh, or any other t type of uh, source of resources well, that you could uh, use to do this I'm kind of work? Glad you talked about that. We are also we have another project that we're doing that we're trying to implement, and that is add an annex. Okay. Uh, a research library, uh, research historical research library. Mm -hmm to the back of our building oh, back here. Yeah. Now, is it something you'd want to look aesthetically like the church? Oh yeah, would, it will. Not it, just a building, just stuff. No, there. no, no, no. It will be an, uh, uh, attached to the what we have here. Uh -huh. And it will be, it will look very similar to what we have now. And what do you envision that library? Well, the, the whole, a lot of people are interested, and we talked about this when you first walked in, family history. Yes. And we do uh, maintain family history uh, folders here and in, in our files. We have a number of families in the county where we have uh, family histories and people come here for that to, to research their family sure. history. And so we're, that's one of the things that we would like to um, uh, make easier access for people. Sure. And we want to move out some of the things that we have in our, our sanctuary here to make room for the museum upgrade. Mm -hmm. So these projects are in tandem. Uh, you know, once we get to annex, we get some of the things out of 
the sanctuary into the annex, it allows more room for the improvements we're planning on making for the museum. So, of course, that takes money, and we know well, how expensive things can be. Now. Right. We've uh, we've secured money for that, Excellent. and uh, the county. Of course, the the this is a county building. Mm -hmm. It doesn't belong to the historical society, but uh, we've raised the funds for it, and then. Along came COVID, and then, oh boy, and yeah. Then along came inflation, and so we're going to need some more money. But we're in the process of doing that, uh, uh, raising that money, and we feel uh, we, we feel um, we think we're going to be able to raise the money for it. So great. Uh, the county is in the process of developing uh, a set of contract documents for the construction of that building right now. Excellent, and it's in a great location. Uh, We'll talk about the highway in just a moment, but McConnell Park, which yeah. is named after uh, someone who has a lot of history here in, in the county as well. So you've got parking, you've got uh, great access here. So it's a pretty good location for that. Um, let's talk about the highway just very quickly, because one of the things that I don't know that many people now today know is that uh, it appears this church is in a bowl. Um, and that did not occur naturally. <laughs> that was, that's a man-made bowl. Well, you, uh, you've what, heard, what happened there? Well, you've heard Bill talk about that. Originally, this, this church was constructed right on the edge of the Federal Highway. The Federal mm -hmm. Highway sure. was right out here in front right of the outside, church. Yeah. And, uh, and the area in front of the church was level. Sure. You know, you just walked out the door and walked out, and there was the Federal Highway. And old Route 2 followed, for a short distance, the uh, Federal Highway mm -hmm. uh, in front of the church here. Well, the state of Georgia realized that the bridge in, out here across Tiger Creek uh, on 41 had deteriorated and was unsafe and needed to be replaced. Mm -hmm. So they developed a design to do that. Uh, they submitted the design to the Federal Highway Department because it had federal funds in the project they reviewed it and said you you have to these, this will not work you have to raise the bridge to the what they call the 200 year flood level and did you know of this church ever flooding no. in the past no i mean you, there's no history of this place no flooding uh and i, I you know uh, i think it could have been done it's just the way it happened so it was a set of very unfortunate circumstances i'll put it that way yeah. <laughs> anyway so the, the, the state just modified their design and did not contact the stakeholders and just built it. They, and so they, raised, they relocated 41 Highway slightly, raised the bridge above the 200-year flood level, and when that happened, they had to raise the road in front of the church about 15 feet. So we now have a 15-foot high embankment in front of our right around. national historic site. Isn't that this is a national historic site. It's kind of tragic because you think you go right outside that door thinking you would just walk out and there's a berm, there's yeah, a hill. Yeah. And you know, uh, everybody is for, uh, uh, appreciates history and all of our county officials appreciate history. The state typically, they appreciate history. They even have a historian that's supposed to uh, oversee all projects when they're being designed. This project just ended up falling through the cracks, you might say. That's unfortunate. Yeah. And so uh, it, it, it's a shame. Well, it's thanks to you gentlemen who are keeping that alive and are telling the stories. And it's so important. Um, we were speaking before uh, we recorded this interview about kids in school now. And I wonder whether they're learning about local Catoosa County history, you know, maybe touching on a little Georgia history, a little national history. But it seems like it would be important for kids in the local school system to have a understanding about what happened here from, say, the 19th century uh, when Catoosa County was founded on up. Because it really explains a lot of where we are today. Well, that, that's one of our missions as a society is to promote the history of our county and as Bill talked about it until you know your history uh, you know you, you just don't have the full picture mm -hmm. and You're so right. we we uh, encourage any 
anyone, especially young people, to come and to attend our meetings. That's one of the things we do. We have a monthly meeting, mm -hmm. and we talk about uh, a topic of uh, local, of, of county history uh, that would be of interest to our, our members. And those are broadcast. And meetings. we do. We broadcast live over uh, WAK here, a local radio station in 94.7. 94.7, that's right. And sometimes, sometimes people offer to give us things that, that we can't take. Yeah. Hmm. Like a feather bed. Yeah. Uh, like a Ku Klux robe that got us into trouble for a while. Sure. Uh, we have about uh, three collections that are waiting for us to get room enough mm -hmm. to add to it. So Which is that library in the yeah, future would yeah. be a great place to hold that stuff. Yeah, so, so the, the, the closets and the upstairs attic and uh, all over Catoosa County has got stuff that they're, I can only they're imagine. looking for a place to put it. Yeah. And, uh, like one of the things in the back of this church is this big box that is uh, said to be an old ice chest. Oh. <laughs> but... Um, you know, if you think about it, who was making ice at that well, time? <laughs> I have the foggiest idea. But it's neat to have it. Well, and, and, well and you know. Uh, it's not everybody's got one. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. A group of my friends and I went to the Atlanta History Center, and I don't know if you've ever been there, but I they have. have a great uh, Civil War uh, museum. And we were talking to them, and they have four times the artifacts in the basement that they have on display. Wow. So I think that in some ways can be true for us that there are many, many artifacts that we would like to have in here mm -hmm. that we're just not going to be able to. One of the things that we want to do as a, uh, as a society is to maintain our sanctuary as a church sanctuary. Yes. We have a museum in here, mm -hmm. but we don't want to uh, uh, totally distract from the idea that this is a sanctuary. It's a place of worship. And, 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 and that when people walk in, they get the feeling that they're walking into a church. Do you ever get visitors who are, say, Presbyterian, maybe visitors from Scotland or, you know, from, from the old land, but people that come here who just like to sit here and have a quiet moment uh, and reflect? I mean, have you had any interest in that, or is it primarily as a, as a museum right now? I've done more of that than anybody else has. You have? Okay. <laughs> yeah. No, well, we don't. Uh, it'd be a good place just to sit. Yeah. Problem is, it's it's locked up except when we're here. Sure. But I could see that if tours, like you said, more tours were available, and if you had a group from, say, Scotland, who were members of the Presbyterian Church, and they were just visiting the states uh, to see history from from old Scotland, it would be almost kind of. It would be neat, I think, yeah. to, to meet those people and to see them come here and just feel it. Well, I, know? Think, I think most people, when they walk in for the first time, they are somewhat fascinated. I mean, sure. they walk into history, and I think they appreciate it. Yeah. Um, uh, there, there's so many artifacts that we have out there that, that um, uh, we have to keep locked up. You can't, you can't just leave the church unlocked because yeah. they're valuable. Sure. Uh, and just vandals because we know they're people yeah. that like to just do stupid things. So but. that kind of keeps people from just coming in and sitting. Yeah. Like you said. Yeah. One of the things I'd like to do, if we could, I yeah. want to mention our, our, our lineup for a little bit about our programs coming up this year. Tell me. Uh, we're going to have uh, this first session and uh, first meeting in September will be uh, food, uh, Civil War era food. What did the what people, did they eat? what did they eat? We're going to have a, a lady from uh, University of Georgia is going to come and speak to us about that. Fascinating. So I think that'll be a good, we're going to have a lady come uh, that, and speak to us about the Civil War hospitals, and I mentioned that earlier. Mm -hmm. So there'll be a program on what were the hospitals, where were they, and, and some of the stories associated with those, sure. and I think that'll be of interest. So how will people uh, learn about these things, the website? Uh, we, we do have a website, mm -hmm. uh, katusahistory.org, mm -hmm. I think, yep. I believe. We'll get that website out <laughs> there, but, but you publish that on the website when you have oh, guest yes, speakers. Oh yes, 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 and, and all our members get a, a, a newsletter that advertises this, plus anybody that has an interest, mm -hmm. period, 
can get on our website, and we will send our uh, notices out to anybody. We, you know, we put them on the list if they would like to be. So that's mm -hmm. that's not. Easy. I think that would be important is to generate in interest among people who are watching and in the future. Right. You know, where would they go to find out who is speaking? Because right. when you mentioned. What were they eating back then? You know, I, I kind of wonder about that too, especially in a lot of this ice chest that we have back we, in the back here. We've got a <laughs> we've got a, 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 a fellow who's coming, going to talk to us about, uh, <clears throat> or he's going to our Christmas program is going to be on Civil War era Christmas music uh, with a, a fellow who plays the fiddle. Interesting. And uh, so we're going to have that for our Christmas. Is party. that Christmas music that we'd be familiar with? The tunes, well, the, the melodies, or is that something different? Come and find out. Yeah, <laughs> that's a teaser. Right? So there you go. Well, and then uh, we're going to have a program on uh, Andrew's Raiders on the uh, mm -hmm. the story of the Great Locomotive Chase, oh, and yeah. we're probably going to do that in the music in the depot. Yeah. And we've got some uh, pretty ambitious plans for that which we'll be announcing later and it's just a matter of how much of this we think we can buy it off ourselves. Well thank you very much. And uh, we're also going to have a lady from uh, West Georgia College going to yeah. come and speak to us about uh, history of Georgia and uh, about museums in Georgia. So anyway we've got a great lineup of uh, programs this year and uh, we're going to be advertising that. I can't wait. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. I, I know we all have busy days and, and things to do, but I appreciate your time. I just think it's important that these stories just don't fade away, that uh, they continue to be told. So um, maybe we can get some younger folks uh, interested I as well so. in preserving it because, you know, we all have our roots somewhere. We <laughs> thanks, certainly for, do. thanks for coming. And thanks for coming. Yeah, I appreciate it. And thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Join us next week uh, for the Catoosa County Government Hour. We're, we're going to continue our story uh, telling about Catoosa County. And uh, as we know, this week we're, we're starting with the history. I'm John Plus. Take care. Bye-bye.